In this video, we're going to look at secret management inside PowerShell Universal. So you can actually store and manage secrets uh, in various vaults using PowerShell Universal directly, uh, and then use those secrets either as credentials for scripts that you're running or secrets that you're going to pass into the scripts that you're executing, whether it be with dashboards, APIs, or jobs. So inside PowerShell Universal, where secrets are managed are actually um, in the variables page. So if you click platform variables, um, this is where you'll actually manage your secrets. You'll notice that in the top right here, we have an import secret button. If I click that, you'll see that I have a bunch of secrets that I've created in local vaults that are storing various things like API keys, credentials, dashboard secrets, and that kind of thing. So we currently support uh, string and PS credential uh, types for your secrets. And we have two built-in vaults. We have the built-in local vault and the PSU secret store. The built-in local vault is only available on Windows, and that is using Credential Manager to actually store the secrets. Um, it's kind of, uh, it is using the user uh, store for that. So if you were to change your user credentials, it would actually, you wouldn't see your credentials anywhere, you wouldn't be able to access them. So you have to be aware that it's using the user store for Credential Manager. Similarly, with the PS Secret Store, this is actually a single file that stores all the secrets, uh, and it stores in the current user's um, profile, and um, it kind of is the default vault for PowerShell Secret Management. So what PowerShell Universal is actually doing is calling the secret management modules to do things like read the secrets. So for example, if I wanted to bring in one of these secrets, I could select this, click OK, and now I have a new variable called my secret, and obviously it's not going to display the value, um, but we can use that secret in our scripts. So if I go to my scripts folder here, and I'm just going to create a new script, click OK, and to access that secret that I just imported into my environment, I can use the secret scope. So rather than uh, exposing the entire secret vault to all your scripts and APIs and dashboards, you have to specifically say which secret you want to access. So in this case, I want to access my secret. Now in a real world scenario, you wouldn't actually output it like this, but you would actually use this to call other things. Uh, in this case though, I'm just going to output the value of this secret. So now you can see that it actually returned the value of what was stored in that string secret. So you can see it's my secret one, two, three. Just like how you can um, import secrets, you can also create secrets. So if I want to create a new secret, I would click the create new secret or create new variable button and then switch to secret. From here, I want to create my new secret. Uh, and then I can either select a string or a credential. So let's actually select a credential this time. Uh, I'll put a username and a password. And there's a couple other options here. One is disabling run as support. So I may want to create a credential, but I don't want to allow my users to actually run scripts as this user. That's why you would check this disable run as support. But I'm going to actually leave that alone to allow users to actually run as this user. From there, I'm going to select my vault. You can see I actually have three vaults here. I have the two that are built in, the built-in local vault, the PSU secret store, and then I also have Azure Key Vault. And I'll talk about that in a little bit about how that was created. So I'm just going to store this in the built-in local vault. And when you create uh, a secret that is a credential, you can actually use that credential throughout PowerShell Universal. You can also use it directly in your scripts. So if you wanted to use the secret scope and use that secret inside your scripts, you could do dollar sign secret and get my new secret. But in this case, I want to just kind of show you where you can use this um, throughout PowerShell Universal. So first of all, you can use it on scripts. So when I'm going to actually run a script, you're going to see that you have this run as dropdown. So we go and look at your current variables. And if you have a PS credentials stored, you can actually select that to run as that user for this script. So that's kind of how we manage the run as credentials. So that's actually available in a lot of different places. If you're going to create a new dashboard, you also have the ability to select uh, your run as credentials. So it could start as an alternate user. Um, and additionally, terminals and schedules can also create um, scripts that run as alternate users. So that's kind of how we allow you to run um, you know, scripts and dashboards and APIs as alternate users by using that built-in uh, secret management support. So let's talk a little bit about um, the Azure Key Vault that you noticed that I had in my environment. So 
I actually registered a new secret management module on my machine and PowerShell Universal will automatically pick that up and then show you that vault inside of PowerShell Universal. So to accomplish that, what I did is I installed the uh, Azure Key Vault module. So I just called install module on this and now I have AZ Key Vault uh, available in my environment. And this is actually an implementation of the Microsoft Secret Management um, Vault. So when this is installed, you can actually register it as a secret management vault. So in PowerShell Universal, the way to accomplish that is actually by using an initialization script. So an initialization script runs before PowerShell Universal does anything. Uh, it actually is before a configuration files run or it synchronizes with Git. It's kind of the first thing that happens when PowerShell Universal starts up. The reason that you want to put your secret vault registration in here is because other things may rely on that secret vault later on, like loading the variables and then using those variables in other configuration files. So what I'm doing here is um, setting a variable for my uh, subscription ID, and then I'm calling register secret vault. This is just a uh, Microsoft secret management module commandlet, um, and from there, I want to specify the uh, module name I'm going to be using. So that was the Azure Key Vault uh, module I installed. Uh, the name, that's just a friendly name, it's going to show up uh, inside PowerShell Universal. And then you need to specify some uh, vault parameters. So these vault parameters are kind of like adjustable based on the vault that you're connecting to. Uh, in this case, Azure Key Vault needs to know which vault to use and then which subscription ID to use. Um, I'm also specifying allow clobber, so if that vault already exists, just you know wipe it out and um, continue on. If you're running in an Azure environment, um, you can use uh, managed identities to just use connect AZ account, um, specify the subscription ID, and it'll connect to that account uh, appropriately. I've already connected to my account, so I just have this uh, commented out for now. And you can see here that I have this universal uh, demo secrets uh, vault set up here. So now that I have this registered, what I can actually do is go to variables, and if I create a new variable, click secret, um, I'm just going to say this is an Azure Key Vault secret. Uh, it's just going to be a string. We can just set some value. And then um, from there, I want to select Azure Key Vault. So now what this is going to do is it's going to call the standard uh, PowerShell secret management module commandlets. But because we have the secret management module for Azure Key Vault, it knows how to communicate with that vault. We've configured that vault, it's available to us. And if we click OK here, is actually going to create this in PowerShell Universal. So from a PowerShell Universal standpoint, all we see is, uh, if we look in this variables um, drop down here, or uh, configuration file, is we have various variables set up, and they're, they're specifying the vault that they're configured for. So we actually go and look and see which registered vaults we have, and then we load them from um, that vault. So what's cool about that is if we actually go over to this universal demo now and hit refresh, what you're going to see is that that Azure Key Vault uh, secret is now in Azure Key Vault. So uh, it's not stored on the PowerShell Universal server at all. It actually goes and communicates with Azure uh, based on your communicate or your authentication preferences, and um, it will load that secret and use it inside your scripts, APIs, or dashboards. So there are lots of Key Vaults, and if you are looking for a Key Vault, there are actually um, there are these tags that you can look for, which are the secret management tags. So if I click on this, you'll see that there are a bunch of different secret management vaults that you can use. Obviously, Key Vault is the most used in the Microsoft space, but there are things like Secret Store, KeyPass, uh, HashiCorp's Vault, Bitwarden. Um, I know there's CyberArk in here. Even Chromium is available. So um, there are lots of Key Vaults. And if we need to create more Key Vaults, I think that's something cool that we could build for the community. So if you are using a Key Vault that you don't find inside, um, the PowerShell gallery. Uh, it's definitely something that we could kind of collaborate on. So this has been an overview of how to use secrets inside uh, PowerShell Universal. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to leave uh, feedback in the comments.